Arkansas. Today I'm going to show you how I make my seed starting mix. What I've got here is a screening, a small screen and a large screen. We're going to be using the small screen today. I got a tote back here that's empty and dry and clean to put the seed starting mix in. And I've got the beginning makings of the seed starting mix and that's peat moss. Peat moss is primarily used in most seed starting um, formulas that you can buy. So let's get started. This mix I got from Lowe's. Most big box stores are going to have your, uh, I think this, yep, three cubic feet of peat moss. And I think this was right around 10 to 12 bucks. Real cheap and it makes a lot. This is hardware cloth. You can get it at like tractor supply or feed stores. And this is quarter inch. Um, and that's what we're using today. Now I took a deck um, bollards. It's the pieces that go in between that make it look pretty. You know, the slats. And when I redid my deck, these are the old ones and they're treated. So I went ahead and just made this out of that. Now, if you look at it on the other side, you can see that I stapled it down and I screwed it down. And you can do it, you don't have to use deck collar. You can use um, two by fours or basically anything that has some size to it that keeps the um, whatever you're going to sift. Uh, from coming out and then just attach it just like I did. Now this is a tote. The tote I've used a lot of times for various things from sanitizing to making the seed prep mix, uh, seed starting mix and things like that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to sift it. I'm going to take handfuls of the peat moss here. I've already cut the top off and this, believe it or not, this stuff has sticks in it and stuff, and you'll see that as we sift. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to sift it just like we would sift flour or something like that for cooking. We're going to put it in here, and I'll show you that. That's how you do it. So this is what the sifting does. I've got about half of this tote filled. And it is very fluffy, as you may expect. And the particles are fine, which is what you want, because you don't want the seeds to have difficulty getting up through this. And I want to show you, let me bring the camera over the peat bale. This is says it's 100% organic. It's uh, majestic. Any sphagnum peat moss will work. It's got a it's slightly acidic so I'll have to add a little bit of garden lime to it. I believe that Canada has a great plan to ensure that sphagnum remains renewable. What I am going to show you here is that the bag is basically 25% used. So three cubic feet, it's less than one cubic foot that was used to make all of that. And um, at $10, less than the third was used. So this is, or 11 or $12, this is about, I used about $3 to make all of that. The next thing is going to add some bulk to it is what I'm going to use. This is about, I think it's two gallon, but that's how much particles that were big that I got from sifting that didn't go in there. And I'm gonna put those around my blueberry plants. They should love it being that slightly acidic. Right, uh, got seven of these of the mix, the peat that was sifted. 
I took seven of those buckets and I put it in this trash bag here. It's a heavy duty uh, outdoor trash bag. And I'm putting it in there temporarily only because I need this container again and for the second ingredient. And that's going to be aged rice holes. I've used these quite a bit um, in all forms of my gardening, especially in my hydroponics. The aged rice holes are going to act similar to what perlite would act like. So if you don't have access to aged rice holes, it's not a problem. You can do this also with perlite or vermiculite. So this is the primary mix, the peat. Now we need to put about 25 to 30 percent of aged rice holes or perlite into the mix and that's going to add it's going to help with aeration and keep the compaction down and just add some more volume as well this is my pile of aged rice holes i bought it about a year and a half ago big huge truck seems like it was 13 or 18 tons i got a video on it <clears throat> i think it was august 2018 anyway um so this has been sitting here all this time so I dug down in it because aged rice holes or rice holes have lignin in it and it makes it a really slow to decay product and so it's been piled up here sort of composting cold composting and so I dug down in it to try to get some of the um, rice holes that have been a little bit more cold composted so the particles will be a little bit smaller and I'm going to sift those just like I did the others the uh, peat mold. There's not nearly as much waste with the rice holes as there is with uh, the peat moss because essentially what you're doing when you rub the rice holes across the screen you're essentially kind of grinding it uh, you're making you for sure are making the particles smaller and that's the ending product there and you get this is really damp because it's outside you know and but it's very friable very crumbly and that is something you want you want small particles that are friable that'll hold water for sure and these two together work great. Like I said though, you don't have to use um, rice holes. You can use uh, perlite. Now if you're going to use rice holes, you do not want fresh rice holes. At the very least, they need to be parboiled and um, or well aged. These rice holes are about a year and a half old here in my place and before I got them they were already aged for a while too. So, if you don't, then they'll still nitrogen and potentially uh, do other damage to your plant. So, yep, if you don't have, for the smaller ingredient, if you don't have uh, aged rice holes, then you can use perlite or vermiculite. All right, we're done with the rice holes. And I want to correct a couple things here. This is not one quarter inch. This is one quarter inch. This is one eighth of an inch. Uh, I want to make that clear. That's a big deal for anybody that wants to do this. And this container here is 2.5 gallons instead of, two, uh, what did I say it was, two, I think, before. So each one of these I filled uh, was 2.5 gallons. So there's approximately five gallons of aged rice hulls there. And I've got seven in the plastic bag on the right here. And so that's uh, approximately what 714 so we'll say 13 and 5 so we got about 18 gallons of seed starting mix here all right now that we've mixed the five gallons of aged rice holes i'm going to put the peat moss back in and mix it by hand and i am going to reuse this bag because that's what i'm going to store it in this tote I use quite often for other things too so I just what I do typically is just get my hands dirty I get in here and I'll lift it up from the bottom and twist you should wear a mask when you do this and definitely be not in a confined area because of all the dust 
what I typically do is hold my breath and do it three or four times and then come back. Just reach down and I do this just like a mix I guess kind of like a washing machine okay backing up a little bit don't want to breathe it okay the uh, rice holes were wet or damp for sure had a lot of moisture and peat moss is i don't know the word maybe it's hydrophobic it's where um it it takes a lot to saturate but once it gets saturated you can't unsaturate it hardly ever that's why it's such a good medium because it retains moisture so well and it wicks water if you water here what wicking means is if you water here, it'll soak over, kind of like a paper towel. If you touch it with water, it soaks up the water. That's what wicking does, and peat moss is very good about it. The aged rice holes are pretty darn good about it, too, and they both make a great mixture. Okay, now that we've done this, I want to show you the next part, and that is... Adding the hydrated lime. Let me make sure that's in the picture. It is. And I've got two cups mixed in this watering can here. Why do they call it a can? It's plastic. <laughs> anyway, I've got uh, two cups of hydrated lime mixed in with uh, water and the water is really nutrient water it's a very mild uh, water soluble fertilizer i use master blend and I, it's right at 100 parts per million about one tenth of what you're supposed to use and i've grown microgreens with 100 percent so i know uh, anything 100 percent or less on the bag mixing instructions will be safe for the seed but I don't, I, I don't want a lot to start out with. I want just enough to help these seedlings get going well. And if you didn't know this already, most of your potting mixes, including seed starting mixes, have uh, some fertilizer in them. It's just a different type, probably. If you don't have Master Blend, um, you can use, um, uh, what's that called, miracle Grow. Just you need to be. It just needs to be very weak for seedlings. So this is a mixture of hydrated lime, two cups, and very weak fertilizer. So I don't want to do any more than this two. This is a one gallon. Then one gallon of water because I don't want the soil saturated. So I'm just going to pour in one gallon's worth. And that will soak all the way throughout the medium nicely even though it looks really really wet right here that'll soak throughout and after it soaks really well I'll probably take and mix it up a little more even more all right I already started mixing it and I'm taking this piece of PVC here using it as a mixing stick because it's wet and I don't want to get it all over my arms even though it's already all over my arms I don't want to make it worse so I'll just do this a little bit and that'll conclude this video um, <clears throat> when I go to plant these we're going to sterilize the potting mix uh, this my seed starting potting mix homemade and we do that because there is almost no way to get pathogens disease damping off, for example, insects, 
and all that out of potting mix. If you've ever bought it from a store, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll get the little black flies. You'll have a lot of times seedlings that'll just kind of flip over and die and you don't, you don't know why. Well, that's why it's damping off disease and the little flying black gnats or critters that annoy the dickens out of me. So what we do is going to be covered in the next video on planting out the cells and that's going to include sterilizing this uh, medium. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you.